I'm okay. I'm recovering pretty well from last night. Not from drinking, from listening to Weezer for an hour. I'm recovering. I'm on the up. Thank you for checking in. Good afternoon. Stream viewers. And potentially VOD viewers. So, I don't have super long to stream today. I've got D&D &D at 9 o'clock. I don't plan on streaming that, so I'll probably only be going for about an hour and a half. But, I went to a concert last night. Felt like streaming, don't really have time to do anything else. So, just playing a random game. Gato Robato. It's like a little Metroidvania where you play as a cat in a mech suit, which I think was a cut character from Overwatch. I wish I was joking. Not relevant, but I just wanted to share with everyone, because I'm a narcissist, that my YouTube channel hit 100 million views. Uh, I think, like, yesterday or this morning. Last I checked it, it hit this number, which I never hit. Finally did. Last video put it over. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that proud of myself. Just, just wanted to pat myself on the back there. But that's not relevant to the game. Again, for anyone that's just getting here, just playing a random game for about like an hour and a half. Maybe talk about the concert I went to uh, and raid it out of, uh, out of Weezer albums. Not really. But first, audio check. Maybe I should have done that during the music. Can you hear my voice? Is the mic muted? I'm guessing no, since people have been responding to my words for the past minute. But yeah, so... The Hella Mega Tour is back. Uh, it's Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer. All rolled up to one. Sounds like a once-in-a-lifetime lineup. And... It got pushed back about a year. It was supposed to happen in, like, 2019. But, cough, cough. So, it started recently, and the Atlanta show was actually the second. So, I got in on the second show of uh, Hella Mega Tour. And I'm, I'm not going to pay too much attention to the game. Uh, so, basically, you're a cat, and this is your owner, and you both crash, but he, I guess he can't get out of his ship or something. So, you got to play as his cat running around, um, clearing a Metroid stage. And that, there's your catch-up on what you're gonna be seeing on screen. So anyways, I got tickets to this concert. We all know why. Fallout Boy. Uh, I was lucky enough I knew a guy who knew a guy who got me a sweet seat, along with a couple friends. I was going to be in the crowd. I'm really glad I wasn't because it fucking poured. Once I got there, it, it was at like the the Brave Stadium, just a baseball stadium with chairs on the field. And it fucking poured on everybody in the front. I felt awful for the people in the mosh pit. It was good. Um, Rivers said fuck instead of hoot at the end of pork and beans, which is really what I paid for. That's why I went there. They didn't play as much Van Weezer as I thought. I think they played like two songs from it, but it was a pretty diverse field of Blue Album, Pinkerton, Beverly Hills, you know, all, all the, the hits. And then they played like End of the Game, and I think I need some of that. Their performance was all right. I've got this... So the thing about Weezer is if you like their songs, you'll appreciate their concerts, but like they don't... Rivers is very clearly a 40-year-old man trying to have the stage presence of a 30-year-old man. And by that I mean, like, you can tell he's an old guy, and he's sort of embracing it. He knows he's a boomer rock star, but um, he doesn't have that much flair. He'll just he'll run around on stage, kick his leg now and then, put his hand up in the air, but he doesn't hype up the crowd. 
and you know Brian Scott they don't go they don't improvise on the instruments they play the songs very uh, beat for beat they don't change it up uh, and I didn't care that much for Fallout Boy because I don't know Fallout Boy that well but Green Day holy shit Green Day was the main event Billy Armstrong the singer of Green Day that dude has charisma to carry the entire concert I think he said Atlanta, Georgia at least 12 times. Because he, he knew that that would spark some joy. And he just like... Uh, Billy Armstrong's going on like 49. But man, he does not look a day over 30, 35. And he has the charisma of a 20-year-old. Which makes sense because Green Day is a lot of like political anti-establishment rock. He still has that vibe. Um, I loved it. Green Day was the coolest just because so there is They actually let people on stage. I, I'll I'll have a back and forth with chat, but I'm kind of just Giving you um an update on how the concert was So the cool thing about Green Day was they let one fan on and they stage dived like they they're like Are you cool with stage diving and when they said yes, they jumped into the crowd I was really happy for them, but what was even cooler is at Green Day concerts, there's one song where they invite a, a fan to come up and play it because it only takes three chords. And Billy goes, does anyone know three chords? And you can already tell like eight people in the mosh pit have a sign that says, I know three chords, let me play. Which is cool. So this this dude, this kid named Clay, I guess, uh, gets put up, brought up on stage. Billy asks if he's vaccinated. He says, yeah. And holy shit. I don't think anyone in the crowd was expecting Clay to fucking shred. So Clay goes up there, nails the three chords, then gets invited to solo on Basket Case, the song afterwards, and he fucking killed it. People were chanting, Clay, 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 Clay. You saw Clay after the concert, Dillweed? I saw him too. I was waiting for Valet with my friends. And we saw Clay leave out of the exit. And Pete, like, people started chanting his name after the concert. He was just walking out. What was cool was they let him keep the, the guitar he played on. So they let Clay on stage. He played a solo. Like, that's, that's a, some lifetime memories right there. For the rest of your life, I got to play with Green Day, and they gave me a guitar. It was amazing. So yeah, Green Day was the spectacle of the Hella Mega Tour. You can tell too, like they were the last show and the theater was pretty filled for Weezer and Fall Out Boy, but it was packed for Green Day. There were people that only went there for Green Day. Whereas everyone else was like, at least half of them were waiting for Green Day. So if you want my opinion, I think the Hella Mega Tour was worth it. I don't care much for Green Day's last album. Don't care much for Weezer's last album. Don't know what the hell Fall Out Boy's doing. But they're mostly just playing hits. So if you like the hits of those bands, you'll be fine. I don't think I have like a bomb or anything. So, oh wait, I can jump out. Yeah. You like Van Weezer? See, there were two songs on Van Weezer where they shredded. End of the game, and I don't even remember the other one. The beginning of the end, maybe? I like those songs, but everything else felt a little... tossed together. For my tastes. But again, they didn't play much of it at the concert, so it was cool. So I was in a suite, but, like, it was a shared suite. There were a bunch of different people there. And when Green Day came on, uh... My row was empty up until Green Day where this dude and his girlfriend sat down. And while I was walking to my seat, the girlfriend asked me, like, my boyfriend loves Green Day, but I don't know any of his songs. Do you think you could hype him up and party with him a bit? Like, re I, I, like make it a special night for him? And I, I knew like 40% of the Green Day songs, but I didn't know all of them. So whenever a song I came, I knew came on, like Time of Your Life, or 21 Guns, or, um, 
Jesus of Suburbia. When a song I knew came on, I would turn to the guy, like bump elbows with him and just, I would karaoke night with a stranger. Cause I wanted to be, I wanted to be a good um, seat partner. So I hyped him up. And it's, it's like he said he lived for it. He was having fun. So I think it worked out. They didn't play, actually, no, they played Boulevard. I know because that's one of the songs where everyone pulls out their phone and turns their flashlight on. Happens a lot. It was weird because Fallout Boy went over their time, so they finished their last song and then they just like, yeah, we're out of time, bye. They just left at, in the middle of their set. It's because they had to set up for Green Day, I guess. I was like, huh. Didn't, didn't expect that. Oh, I, I was trying to hit these bushes, but they're a little too high. Fall Out Boy had two songs left, but the venue made them get off. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate Fall Out Boy. I just don't know them as well. They didn't play I Write Sins, Not Tragedies, which is a tragedy and a sin. Um, I knew like two of their songs. That's um that's a my chemical romance song, right? Don't correct me. Well now now I you can verify that I don't know Fallout Boy very well. Uh, there were like two songs I could sing along to, but I was really just waiting for Green Day to come on. Um the people we were with, like some of the fr the friends of friends I was with were there for Fallout Boy. So uh you know, I still acted into it, but I, yeah, I was waiting. Oh, wait, is it Panic at the Disco? It's not even My Chemical Romance. I get, I get all these goth bands mixed up. All in all, it was good. There was an opener band called The Interrupters. They're like a ska band. So, I've been listening to them after the concert, just like, uh... Because whenever I'm at a Weezer concert, there's usually an opener, like a little indie band that I, I'm interested in. The last time it was the pauses. This time it's the interrupters. Every band seems to have to start with the. So I'm I'm guessing the next Weezer concert, the opener is going to be called the derivatives. Looking forward to them. You could tell, like, the crowd was happy, um, to actually get to, like, go to a concert, because that's the first concert I've been since lockdown. And it seemed, like, you could tell with the crowd, everyone was super into it. Uh, I need to pay attention for a minute. I'm, I'm walking back and forth in a Metroidvania, which could quickly become three hours of my life if I don't pay attention. I didn't buy a shirt, but I bought a poster. I have too many Weezer shirts. I don't need any more merch of them. Yeah, I don't know where this game wants me to go. I think I have to like... It's a Metroidvania. I'm sure I have to like go backwards. Or do that. Yep. Found it. Thanks for the sub, Razin. Why am I obsessed with Weezer? I... I mean, part of it's just... Embracing the meme. Like, I... I, I know my associations with YouTube. So, I, I don't mind playing it up a little bit. I, I try not to overdo it. It's mostly just incidental that Weezer did a concert. So, I'm, li I'm talking about it. It's not like I, I tour with them and follow them. I just got a chance to see them recently. And I thought I'd talk about it. But, like, to be honest, I liked Green Day's set more than I liked Weezer's at the concert. 
Because again, Weezer, you can tell they're kind of just doing it because it's just part of the, the gig, right? Like, I'm sure they enjoy making music or they enjoy touring, but I don't know. They don't act super hyper into it. They act like it's just another day. Which I get. They're like a fucking... They've been touring since 94. I, w I would be kind of tired of it by that point, too. Yeah, um, Billy Armstrong said we were louder than Dallas, which was the first show. I'm sure he says that to every city, but... Good for us. Fall Up Boy at Pyrotechnics. I'll give them that. Weezer didn't have anything. They just had a big W and like a projector behind them or an LED screen. But Fall Out Boy had pyrotechnics. Green Day had screens with a bunch of like unique effects for each song along with a bunch of visuals. Oh man, I'm getting wrecked. They had confetti, yeah, at the end of the final song. They had confetti. Oh yeah, and Green Day had fireworks. Rip. So, if I had to rate it overall, Green Day, top tier. Weezer, mid tier. Fall Out Boy, slightly lower mid tier. Shit, how did I get there? I'm, I'm... I gotta, like, break my way back. Yes, I am a cat. In a suit. How can you kill? No. Oh yeah, Fall Out Boy had like a weird Twilight Zone gimmick they were going for. Like, you have opened the scary door. I didn't really pay attention to it. I couldn't even hear it over the crowd. They were trying to do a gimmick, but it lasted like 30 seconds. Overall, I'm just happy to like go to a concert again. It was fun. I got a little, little tipsy. I learned that Chipper Jones, like MVP of the Atlanta Braves, the, their baseball team. He has his own brand of moonshine. I ended up trying some of that that night because the sweet just had moon, uh, Chipper Jones moonshine. Had like a caramel taste to it. It, it was all right. Not a big drinker. Meow. Oh, the, the boss is a mouse. A rat, a, a rat in a mech suit. Now I've seen everything. I beat Mega Man X. I feel like I can figure this out, even if I've never um, played a, me uh, a side scroller me Metroid. Or, I guess just 2D on a side scroller. Less talk, more boss fight. I know. What did Weezer do at E3? E3? Didn't they just put a song out for Wave Break? I don't think they did anything for E3. Uh, Wave Break is a, like, Tony Hawk boating game, for those who don't know. And Weezer put their last song in it. For marketing, I'm sure. So I'm kind of just trying to wail on this boss faster than it can kill me, but it's not really working. Ow! I'm excited to go to more concerts. I want to find some smaller venues to go to now. It was cool being at the stadium, but like I was behind home plate and they were in the outfield where the the stage was so i pretty much had to rely on the big screens 
to see anything. And it was nice seeing Rivers, Mustache, and Mullet in 1080p, but I want to see, I want to be a bit closer to the stage next time. Ow. And that was my week. Also, I've been... Just to follow up from the last stream, I've been talk... I've been contacting, um, like a merch store to, about getting, um, some, like, novelty, like, plush charm stuff done. And it seems like it's viable, but the one I'm looking at right now might just be a campaign. So it might not be a permanent store. It's like a, a month-long sell as many as you can, and then they get printed or made. So... It's looking viable I can get, like, plushes done at some point, but it might not be permanent. So if that's something you'd be interested in, keep your ears open, because it might be limited time. I would prefer it to be permanent, but it's hard to find a front that will do that, and especially at my size, and where it's hard to, like, verify that you can sell them for a, for, for a long period of time. So, I'll probably have to just do a campaign, and then later on, if I want to reproduce them, I can. No time frame. Hoping for the next two, three months. Minimum. Yeah, bomb me. No, it's just going to be a little Justin. It's going to be my half-grown facial hair and circular glasses in a, a marketable plushy form. It's just gonna be a Toon Link plushie with my face taped onto the front. Like, clearly third party. Yeah, it'll be uh, a bomby. My plan right now... Um, I, I still have to work out the concept. I'm working on the... 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 proof of concept. I might have to contact Pi Bun about having her make it. I'm thinking it'll just be the head. Because I'm not totally leaning towards a full body plush. Anyways, enough about capitalism. Let's play video games. So I think this is like my sixth try on the bus. I, it's dodging those side things. I instinct instinctively want to go under them. That does not work. Have I made original music? I've kicked around um, things. They're not really public. Um, like I have two little minute-long raps that I put out for my subs. <laughs> that I just I didn't put out because I you know self-conscious. Uh, not really. Most of the music stuff I do is just, like, 30 seconds one-offs for a video. Uh, I've done a lot of demo stuff over the years just for practice, but not released. I want to, to do music stuff, but it's a hobby for me. I'm not trying to make a, a career out of it. I don't count the sandwich mixtape because I didn't make the instrumentals. The, I, I mean, I only I only made one, and even then, I didn't write the the chords for it or the song really, just the lyrics. So yes and no. I'm not an established artist, but like I have my head in that area. I think about it. Um, the outro for the last video I made, that one was a fully original. I mean, it was 30 seconds long, and but it that was the funk study intro done on an electric guitar. I didn't make the drums, I should say, but the guitars and vocals I, I wrote.
And even then, um, you know, it's like a garage punk song. <laughs> which basically means sounding shitty as an excuse, uh, as like a design. Like, yeah, it's like super low fi but that's the point, man. Self-made. You wouldn't get it. You square. You moke. Ouch. Ah, uh, it's hard to talk in boss fight. Glad you liked it, it's... yeah. There will be more music stuff in the future. I'm just... Focus on YouTube right now, that's all. Uh, oh, it hit twice. I thought I could, I could like stand close to it. I'm not even close. So the the bar on the right is my health bar. The bar on the top is is the mouse's health bar. Just for those who don't know, um, I just figured that out a second ago. I wonder. I mean, it's a Metroidvania. Maybe there's an upgrade I can go find that'll help this. Because God knows that attack is killing me. Oh no, I, I have to leave my suit to even get out of here. Another mixtape? Mm. Let's see. I've thought about, like, outsourcing the beats and doing another mixtape. Like, if I contact a musician friend and just have them make the sound, the instrumentals, I could just write the lyrics. But I don't know, like, what the point of it would be. Like, I don't know if I'm trying to make a, a parody mixtape again. Or just an actual... Or just get an actual beat creator. I don't know. It is liquid. Glad you like him. All right, I'm gonna be more dodgy this time. That, I touched into it. So the good thing um, is the missile knocks me back. So I could theoretically use it to dodge further away when I need to. I don't think the bombs destroy it, but even if it did, uh, it would kind of be a waste. Because when he's not bombing, he's jumping. So if I bomb the the shots, then I won't be able to bomb the, the mat, the mat, the mouse rat. The rice. Thoughts on Splitgate? I thought of streaming it today, but the servers are down. Uh, I played it once since the changes. Not much has changed, it's just like crossplay. I mean, game's alright. I'd still probably rather play MCC, personally. But, I also haven't played it in a while. I think if I give it another shot, maybe I'll change my opinion. I didn't really talk about Splitgate, I just said it's Halo with portals, but it's dead. So I've never really talked about the game itself. Um, it's not super movement-y, it's not fast. You can kind of go fast with portals, but it's hard because the levels aren't laid out for it. If you go on my Patreon, I have a cutting room floor dock for my movement shooters video. I don't believe it's Patreon, it's patron only. If you just go to the Movement Shooters post and scroll down, anyone can see it. I posted my thoughts on Splitgate in that document. Like, very briefly. I, uh, I, again, I think anyone can see it. And what I said was, like, it's vertical, but the maps don't do enough to use that design. No one in the game knows how to actually use the portal, so... Not very difficult. 
especially now that it's crossplay and it's online, it's, you know, controller players. So it's a movement shooter, but it doesn't really play like one. It plays more like a, like a Halo-y game. Oh, I just talked so much I got lightheaded. I'm used to only recording for videos. I'm not used to just talking. I got into Weezer because I heard them on the radio in high school. I turned up the radio. Take a guess what song I heard. Uh, it's the one with the lyrics that say that funky dude. That's all you need to know. Looks like I just got raided. So, uh, enjoy watching a cat in a mech suit fight a rat in a mech suit. Sorry, a mouse. We were just talking about... I, I don't want to admit what I was talking about, because I feel like I talk about it too much. But, um, thank you, Lens. Wow. Nikita is, um, still talking shit about Weezer, by the way. Creator of Ultra Kill. Th I thought they were done, but... Oh yeah, David Oshbury, the, um, lead of New Blood. If you don't know New Blood, they just make... They just make every good FPS game in the last three years. Like, you go on Steam and go, oh, that game looks fun. New Blood made it. New Blood or Devolver. David Oshbury, leader... Or like a head lead of New Blood tweeted out today, like S we sold mad copies of Ultra Kill. Lol, thanks, Funk. And someone replied, like, can can he finally eat now? And I I just thought, like, I don't think they understand how reviewing works. I do not get a cut, but the video did well. So I I mean, yeah, I'm not starving. Ow. Starving for gamer skill, maybe, but not, not to, for sustenance. Do I have a stream schedule? Not particularly. I'm focused on YouTube right now. Um, when I finish a video, I try to stream two to three times. Right now, I'm putting out like a video every one to two weeks. So, all in all, like three, like one to two streams a week. Usually, like around seven o'clock, I start. Yeah, I stream every day 24-7, but I change Twitch accounts every two hours. It's like an arc. You have to find me. Oh yeah, by the way, this is a Devolver game. Just to reiterate what I said earlier, every good game is made by New Blood and Devolver. You're watching one. Or it's published by them, it's not made by them. I don't think I've seen this mouse's health bar get to the halfway point once. You know, Devolver's on a roll. So, I, I got raided. Uh, I'm not gonna, like, go back into it, but I was t talking earlier about a concert I went to. Um, the Hella Mega Tour. So, if anyone here happens to be planning to go to it, it's got two thumbs up from me. Well, one and a half. Weezer was there. Uh, Green Day blew it out of the park for me. They were really good. It's, it's funny seeing bands that used to be popular 20 years ago, and now all the band members are, like, literally going on 50. But most of them don't look like it. Rivers was the only one there that looked like an old man. Even though they're all more or less in the same age range.
My voice sounds nostalgic. Ah, we got a TF2 player here. Yeah, you know me. Um, I'm that guy that sounds like Schlatt, acts like Donkey. Um, uh, streams like Jerma and comes off like Star. And every time a, a new YouTuber gets big, they just get added onto my list. Uh, it's like Kurt Cobain says, my, my personality is made up of bits and pieces of other people's. I have so many comments on the last video of, uh, this dude sounds like Jay Schmidt. Oh yeah, and his OC looks like Witty. Can't forget that. And looks like Jack White. I'm really just keeping track at this point. Oh, I get I get greedy. Really greedy. Do the I need to see if the bomb the little orbs explode when I shoot them. It might just be easier to break them rather than dodge. What's Star doing? Um From what I know he's put oh it didn't break. He's making a D and D system. Um the what was it called? The Myriad. And just like streams fall fighting games, I think. I saw a couple of streams of his D&D. I thought it was cool. Now that I actually understand D&D and I'm not just watching it, I, I understand the uh, like how combat's different a bit more. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, the whole reason I got into D&D was because I, I watched an Arcadum campaign. I can't remember the name of it. Shattered Crowns. Uh, Star was in that one. Star, Moon, Moon. <sighs> A couple other people. I, I, I'm blanking. But it was a good campaign. They're just fun, a bunch of funny as fuck guys playing D&D. That's what convinced me to go find my own campaign. Well, I learned something. My can't my my um my DM my GM, the guy running my D and D campaign. He's friends with Arcadum, and I could kind of tell from our first session. Uh, he's got an Arcadum-y vibe, where he runs a bunch of campaigns and they're all intertwined with each other. He thinks pretty deeply into like meta gaming of like of letting you interact with his NPCs in multiple ways. Which was good for me, because I know D&D from Arcadum's streams. So when I played D&D, it was the same vibe. I've heard there's an issue with some D&D players where they expect it to be like Critical Role. Where they see the Matt Mercer D&D and they want that super high production, but not every DM can bring that. You have to temper your expectations if you want to play D&D. Especially if it's your first game. Um, it all comes down to your DND's your DM style. As far as I've been told. Still on this boss. Still on, still on this boss. I feel like backtracking. I, I want to know if there's... Like an upgrade. I feel like there's not. I've, I've gone everywhere. I have an idea. It's a bit of a wild card, but... Let's go, motherfucker. Do you know the enemy? 
know the enemy. Well, you gotta know the enemy water. I've got Green Day stuck in my head now. This is gonna sound stupid, but I didn't realize how political Green Day was <laughs> until I paid attention to the concert because I haven't listened to them in a while. But then I, I realized they have a whole song where they say, I want to be a minority. I don't need your authority. It's like, yeah, no, that's, that's, there's definitely an angle here and I like it. It's, yeah, I, who knew punk rock was political? I mean, I listened to them when I was 12, all right? I listened to them when I was still making RSMBs. Most of you don't even know what that acronym stands for. And the other half only know it because you've heard me say it. RuneScape music video. I mean, so I... I like punk rock politically stuff. The thing with Green Day is it's almost sort of like more chance. It's more tribal chance than it is um, a super like complex takeaway. Uh, it's not to um, deconstruct Green Day, but it's like know your enemy. Do you know your enemy? It's, it's like catchy slogans. Pop punk catchy slogans. It's not Flowbots, where they're like listing off names of political figures who have been jailed by the US overseas because they were a little too socialist for the US's tastes. Like they're not that kind of lyricism. I have, a, I have an affinity for flowbots kind of stuff, but I still love Green Day's um, sort of entry level. That feels mean. Um, introductory, maybe, is a more fair word to say. Introductory um, political stances. The, you know, the most fun person at the party, it's the guy deconstructing political meaning in music. I've heard of American football, but I don't. Yeah, it didn't really stick with me. Are they math rocky or am I thinking of modern baseball? I feel like I'm thinking of another sports labeled band. I like math rock, but I really like math rock with vocals. I'm not a big fan of the, like someone jizzing on a guitar for three minutes, but not wrapping it together with some sort of a message. You know, like I'm stuck in the basement, to quote the, the great bobbing. I'm just a crustacean. Uh, you know, I've, I've had people try to get me to listen to Chan and Polyphia, and it's like all solos, but it's all solos. And I don't, it doesn't stick with me as much. I'm doing really well right now. Oh. Yeah, emo, emo math rock doesn't quite do it for me. I've heard of hers. I've listened to Medieval. It was an all right. I, that album was all right. Um, there was like one, like her Med Medieval was like the stick out song, but I don't, don't remember the album from it too well. That was a pretty good run. I feel like I can beat this boss soon.
I mean, it could be a little pretentious trying to subclass rock, but I, I don't mind it because it's a good way to find your tastes. When you genre-fy rock, it, I mean, it used to all be called alt rock because in the 90s, rock was, I mean, you had surf rock, you had like Beach Boys, which was sort of um, rock, but then you started getting Nirvana and Weezer, so then they came up with alt rock, but then you started getting prog rock, psych rock, all these different derivatives, and alt rock was too broad, which is why we now have the 40 million uh, derivatives. Math rock. Um. Ska. And then we got to a point where you just put other genres in front of it. Jazz rock. Psych rock. I guess I already said that. Um, shit ass rock. Egg rock. Corn rock. Every kind of rock. So, I don't mind, like, bands getting, like, labeling themselves as super specific stuff. I mean, the best bands, you you can't even really classify into one thing. It's just like, yeah, they're... Like, you look at Gorillaz. What is Gorillaz? So, are they electronic? Are they hip-hop? Are they rock? It's more used for classifying songs and albums than it is bands at this point. Because, you, you know, King Gizzard, they're... They're prog psychedelic, but they're... 80 other things, too. I beat it. Boom. Rats. First try. I feel like I should go back to that save point. I mean, I'm gonna hope the game quick saves, but just to be safe, you know, it's one room over. Thanks for the sub, gangster. Can I... I've, I've seen someone else change the filter and someone in chat's telling me to, so I'm actually curious. Um, default and soft. Those are my options. I think there's like other, other ones, but I'm guessing I don't have them. I don't want to bright, I don't want to light mode this, this game. Thanks, but Quefius. So that's a name. Um, no one's gonna know what I'm talking about, but the death sound of that frog sounded like the opening to O Green World. Let's see if I can make it play again. That, that, the... That sound, that... That sounds just like the opening to Green World. O Green World. One of the most fever dream gorilla songs they've ever made. I will n never unheal hear that, and neither will you.
that sound. I guess it's a little more like hot, like pitchy in the song. Whatever. Favorite Gorillaz album? Ooh. I wish that they would collab with Deltron, the uh, Deltron 3000 more. He was on their first album. He was Deltron the Funky Ghost. He haunted their drummer, which probably tells you what my favorite. So, damn. I don't know if it's, I guess, Demon Days. I want to say Gorilla's self-titled, the first one. But it's kind of a ritual for me whenever I'm on an airplane to listen to the... Uh, uh, what? What? There was a live orchestral version of Demon Days done at the Sydney Opera House, I believe. And whenever I'm on a plane, I listen to that because it just sounds like takeoff music. Welcome to the world of the plastic beach. So that's probably my favorite. But I love self-titled too. And they haven't done anything with Deltron in a while. Also, Demon Days has a collab with uh, MF Doom on it, so... I mean, come on. Plastic Beach is one of my favorite concept albums, if you want to classify it. Which is ironic because they made NFTs of Plastic Beach, even though that whole album is about environmentalism and the destruction of the Earth. And then for like the 10 year anniversary, they made NFTs, which is like, hmm. But it's a fun concept album. We got a MTV Cribs parody of the Plastic Beach and a website that's now defunct. So that's cool. Also, on their last album, they did a callback to it. Or not the last album, but um, Gorilla's Bites, Bite Sized, whatever the fuck they're doing right now. Um, one of the music videos was a callback to Plastic Beach. Where it was weird, like a portal opened up and they all jumped in but left Murdoch. Song Machine. The the thing they're doing now is Song Machine, and I like Song Machine. It's really been non-stop hits for me. But it was weird. They did like a callback to to Plastic Beach. Good for them. Probably to market their NFTs now that I say it out loud and think about it. There's a lick. There's a lick. For the, whole, for the longest time, I thought the lyrics to that song were, There's a lake. There's a lake. Tu les joues en prison. We were supposed to get a Gorillaz animated f series. And all we got were some advertisements for watches. Well, the song is Desolé. I don't know what that translates to. If it translates to Desolé, des there's a lick. Then that would be funny. It would be humorous. So, I'm trying to find where to progress now. Because it's a little backtracky. It goes back to where I was. But I don't see... I only see where I've been. I don't see where I can go, you know? We weren't supposed to get an animated TF2 series. We just learned uh, after the fact that they wrote scripts for it. And they planned on it, but then they dropped it. It wasn't like a contracted thing. A contract. Uh, that's where Expiration Day came from. That was the, uh, the first episode, or it was one of the episodes of a cut TV show on Adult Swim for TF2. My mech can't get up there. 
Which I'm just dying to see some of those cut scripts because you know they're lying around at Valve. And we're never gonna see them. I need to find a way to get my my kitty tighten up there. There's probably like an upgrade that gives me jetpack or something. That I don't have yet. No, I can't rocket jump. Good try, though. Poor frogs. They're not hurting anybody. I mean, I agree. If they made a TF show, it would have got. It would have done well. They. I mean, it's Valve writers, but. Valve has commitment issues, so it, it was doomed to not happen from the start. Health kit module. Okay. Domo arigato. So I'm not a real musician, I'm not in a position to judge, but I've always wondered why bands like Weezer, Green Day, why they don't improvise during the solos. Like they play hash pipe, but they just play the generic hash pipe solo, where it's just like the, the verse, but on a guitar. You would think they play those songs like hundreds of times, right? They. They play them at every concert. You would think they would get bored and improvise like a new solo. Maybe it's just easier. Maybe like they it's a lot of work. I don't know, but it would really add to the experience if you heard them do some crazy shit in live shows. Rivers is legit just bad. Well, the thing is, if you listen to the demos of the Blue Album, a lot of the Blue Album songs had blue, blue... I'm not even fucking with you. Bluesy guitar riffs. Like... Folky, bluesy... Just like... It, it, there was some flair to it. And I... You know, I love Blue. But... So many of their solos are just not that... Technically crazy or impressive. They're kind of by the books. And at the very least, you know, for the live shows, do something weird, but they don't. I don't think he's a bad guitarist. I just think he knows what sells. And he doesn't want to overshoot. More power to him, but I wish we'd see more of it. Because I know he's capable of it. I think Rivers is more into the lyricism than he is, um, the riffs. I'm glad you liked the, the TF2 video, Foster. It was. I was proud of it. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm starting to get deja vu from Hollow Knight. Like, what do I do? Where do I go? There's no map. I haven't played Pokemon Unite. I don't really plan to. But I'm sure I'll get desperate one day and play it. I don't know. How did I go about learning guitar? I just looked up the chords to songs I liked. Learned the power chords. Uh, once I kind of got a feel for that, I learned how to play the F bar chord, you know, the biggest hurdle in learning. I graduated to improvising riffs over songs. Like, I would just play, you know, bands I like and improvise over them. It might sound like shit, but I learned how to play within their scale. Then I learned, you know, how to play the pentatonic. And that's really all I know right now. I don't know that many scales. 
and lyrics, it's kind of just, I don't know. That's like a muscle memory. You just learn what sounds good. Learn how to stay on beat, uh, weave between beats. I'm no musician, but I just learn it step by step. You don't have to start writing your own songs. Just learn how to write, uh, uh, how to play other songs. Then learn how to restructure those chords. You know, G, G, A, M, C, F. Uh, and then you just push, just push yourself. There's no correct way to learn though. You can start on scales and that's fine. You could start on riffs and that's fine. You could uh, start just by learning how to sing and that's fine too. And I'm back to the start. Lovely. This is new. Now that I have a rocket, some of the old areas open up. The doctor's gone mad. The security systems have been modified to target all personnel in the compound. Most of my colleagues have either been killed or turned into one of those things. I'm fleeing via one of the surface level escape pods, and though I'm unsure I'll survive the trip back, my heart will always belong to the shores of Earth 2. There's a second. Lore. Don't think I've been here. You've reached the Nexus. All roads lead here. Think of it as a hub of sorts. Anyway, we need to find the laboratory entrance. Let's see what you got, Kiki. Elevators. Yo, is this portal? You need bomby lore? You know, fun fact. Like, two years ago, when Bomby was first made, I conceptualized, um, two other characters in the Bomby universe. Um, I can't really remember. One was like, I think it was supposed to be Bomby's sister, and it's like a pink bomb. And the other, I, it was like a triangle character, I don't remember what it was. It was like a flask of a potion or something. And it was supposed to be like a, like a JRPG party. That I could create bomby lore out of. But I never did anything with it. And I think I lost the sketches I made. You want a bomby Metroidvania? Bill's Pills of a... Uh, a community member of mine actually modded Bami as a character into Enter the Gungeon. Which is not really a Metroid, I guess, as much as it is a roguelike. But that's basically like a Bami playable in a game, and it's actually pretty accurate. He runs around with a bomb gun. Looks just like him. Really great sprite work. Very accurate. Ow. I thought cats didn't like water. So, um, if you really, if you really want a, a bomb, a playable bomby, uh, go look up the bomby Gungeon mod. There's a roguelike version. Underwater level. 
Interesting. And as you'll probably see in a later stream, there is a in-progress Bomby Wind Waker mod. So, that's, that's, count them two. Because, you know, the YouTuber in me just has to self-insert into everything. Otherwise, I, I'm not real. I'm only as real as my OC is, guys. Remember that. Yeah, the, the Wind Waker mod will be public. I mean, I'm not the one making it, but I presume Alex will do so. So I gotta run quick here. I, I gotta be off by like 11, uh, by 8.45. So I got like, at most, maybe 30 minutes. Do I know who Linkara is? Yeah, that's the guy Donald Trump uh, pointed at, pointed at in a in a rally, right? You like made fun of him. I know, I, I know Linkara is a YouTuber, and I've I've seen some of the memes, but I don't really know anything about him. He's like an old reviewer, right? Is he one of those legacy reviewers? That's sort of, like, I'm not gonna say didn't age gracefully, but, like, it's kind of a character in real life and not in the good way. That's, I think, as much as I know about him. Like a Doug Walker type. He's from Channel Awesome. Alright, yeah, he's a Doug Walker type. He's a Sigma male type. Wow, that l intended. Good shot, me. Thanks, me. Boy, I gotta tell you, I tried looking at Channel Awesome the other day, and their last upload was a review of every Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, and I remembered why I don't watch Channel Awesome. We need more victimization. A Twitter parody over the wall. Ah, Dougie. Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. So I'm guessing this is a mini boss because no health bar. It's like the cardinal rule, right? No health bar, it's not a boss. I used to watch Channel Awesome like when I was younger. Like that was one of those YouTube channels where it's like, oh shit, new review. But it, it felt like after a certain point, um, Doug was just reviewing because he was a reviewer. And not necessarily because he had anything meaningful to say about the content he was reviewing. Like, he, he was just... He didn't really grow with the times or evolve his platform. There was some channel that did a review of his, the wall review, I know, meta. And there was like a very specific quote from him where he said, Doug Walker wants to be a filmmaker, but doesn't understand how to actually be one because all of his jokes boil down to like, what if Deadpool met Mickey Mouse? And as a result, all of his work is just super surface level. 
where he doesn't really understand what he's reviewing. I'm paraphrasing and probably butchering it, but all in, all in all, Doug Walker's just oh, that wasn't intentional, but um, well, you know how it goes. So I beat the mini boss. Yeah, folding ideas. That was the the channel. Yeah, there goes my cameo. There goes my cameo as the... The reviewer trying to convince Doug Walker to not play a game. Or forcing Doug Walker to play a game. Hello, Doug Walker. It's me, the Funkster. <laughs> and if you don't review Team Fortress 2... The animated series within the next 24 hours. I'll demonetize your channel. <laughs> the timer starts now, Dougie. Yeah, that's not going to happen now. A voice? That's a new voice. I haven't, I haven't tried that one on stream. It's the Funkster. The, the Funker. Thanks for subbing, Slothy. It was the voice, right? This will run you over. I just realized my health bar has eight bars on it. I think that's like a nine lives joke. Cute. Comedy! Where am I going? Treadmill? Did I miss an actual, like, treadmill thing? I thought that was just an elevator. Is that thing in the top left? The, it, that? No. That's just some industrial furnishings. Um. I I I don't know what trampoline. Doggy. Thanks, Wild. Yeah, I've been. I feel like I'm pretty happy with my editing style right now. Um, I. Uh, like in the last year, I sort of found a certain vibe with the film grain and colored backgrounds that I was happy with, but it still needed to be cleaned up. But in the last video, I feel like the addition of the bomby heads, uh, as well as sort of like, I don't know, just the stylization of the video. I was really happy with it. I feel like it's something I can apply to multiple videos without getting too samey. Oh, wait, is this it? Probably, there are wheels on it. Slothy just gifted 10 subs. Um, that's, that's big for me, thank you. I, I don't know how to show my gratitude. Um, thank you, genuinely. You just pay off my car. Uh, I didn't pay attention to what that treadmill did. I was too busy being thankful. 
Oh, it drained the water. It's for the, the, the sub, the singular sub. <laughs> the singular sub. Um, thank you, Bebop. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with the, the bomby stuff. I want to do more with it. I feel like at one, at some point, it might be worth learning, uh, like, Blender or Maya, just to really up the quality, but for now, I don't mind having sort of the janky YouTuber animation. It's funny getting the comments of people saying, wow, this frame rate is so low and janky. I love it. Like, it's almost a backhanded compliment. Almost. The best ones are, it's like into the Spider-Verse. Like, yeah, it is. That's what I was going for. Definitely not conserving frames because it's easier. Definitely a stylization. Honestly, that makes me want to think, try it. Because Spider-Verse was animated on fours. Like, they doubled the frame. Or, what, it was animated on, I don't fucking know. The backgrounds were at 24 FPS, but the characters were 12. Something like that. But, Bomby's animations aren't consistent. I just animate it based on what I'm saying. So, there's not a consistent frame rate. So I'm curious, what if I animated Bami at a consistent frame rate and then animated his clothing at a variable frame rate? Would that like be sort of a vibe, um, a style? Not to misuse the word vibe. I'll, I'll think about that for the future. Any recommendations on learning how to model? I'm not the guy to ask because I learned by making TF2 hats. So, there are definitely guides on YouTube, online, on websites that teach you how to model that will probably be more thorough. Because when I made hats, it was on a need-to-know basis, and they left out stuff that would have been helpful for making um, miscellaneous models. But, like, the general advice I'd give you is have a project in mind. Whether you're trying to make a character or a prop, you know, just like a box. I mean, if you're trying to make a box, just open up Blender and you're done. But, like, have having something in mind. And, uh, that'll kind of help you. And you don't even have to have one. Just find a guide where they teach you how to make something. And treat that as your... Your goal. Because making TF2 hats taught me how to texture in Photoshop. It taught me how to make flexes for, like, beards. Some of you won't know what that means, but it's like having different states. Of, like, an open beard, a closed beard. Just different models all put together in the same project. Taught me a lot of stuff. But I don't recommend you make TF2 hats. It's not that profitable. I mean, if you want to, go for it, but it's not super profitable. Um, it's not super versatile of a skill. Just, just learn how to do something else. Oh yeah, it taught me how to rig too. Rig bones, which is pretty important. Especially if you're in the industry. Um, like... You can get by by, I guess, just being a modeler, but if you know how to model and rig, um, it's gonna be a big leg up, I imagine. For all I know, it's a requirement to do both, but I'm just going off my <laughs> entrepreneurial understanding of the industry. Uh, rigging just means, like, when you make a model, the arms don't move freely, right? They don't come with bones. You have to create the bone, the skeleton, and rig it to the model. That's a skill you need to learn if you're making those sorts of things. If you're making props, you don't need it, you know? If you're just making, um, I don't know, barrels and crates, you don't need to really know how to do that. But if you're making cats, if you're making 
even if you're making slightly complex things like a machine with multiple moving parts, then you need to know how to rig. Ooh. So I don't have suggestions on how to learn, but there's plenty of guides for you. That's all I can really say. Thanks for the sub, pants. Vivil. Vivu. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that the bomby stuff is, like, pretty distinct on itself. Like, I had a couple compliments where people said, like, it's like those PNG arms crossed YouTubers, but better. And I'll take that. Like, some of that was there. Um, you know, I take a little bit of inspiration from Shammy, from Noodle. Noodle's one of my favorites. Uh, those kind of YouTubers that have an on-screen character for what they say sometimes. A little- I stole a little bit from Lazy Purple. Um, I think it was his de demo man video. He had the demo man's just head and arms. I saw that and I'm like, oh, I'm stealing that shit. That's mine now. Yoink. Chammy's good because he does, he goes uh, above and beyond on doing little edits to his character. He'll have them holding um, a dual disc from Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, add like drip to, to Nelson, his little owl. He does more than just have them stand there. It's like a part of the art. Also, I'm biased. You know, I like, I like Chammy. He's my friend. He doesn't use stock photos of owls anymore, actually. Um, in his earlier ones he did, but he actually is in contact with someone who owns an owl named Nelson. And the person that owns the owl sends unique photos to Chami to use. I know like you're split- I'm splitting hairs for him, but I'm- but technically, they're not stock photos. That's what I mean by Shammy, like, put some elbow grease into it, or wing grease. Do owls have elbows? I don't know. So there's an underwater section. I think it's right here. But I need to drain the water so I can get my mech down there. And that's what's holding me up right now. Fuck. Or I'm missing something. One or the other. Um, sub doesn't have rockets, unfortunately. I can't... I'm, I'm not sure what to do right now. This is like a conundrum. And I don't know if I can get my mech off of this platform. It's a little low. Yep, can't jump that high. Fuck, I'm, I'm stuck. Yeah, no problem, Functional. I want to do more of the, like, bundle videos where I just talk about seven different games in a, a genre. But... 
I, I also got to be cautious because those videos, it was easy to make the movement shooter because I've just had a backlog. I have more, but I don't want to make my next video m more, more movement shooters, you know? Even more movement shooters. Like, that's going to get made, but I don't want it to be the only things I make. So, I'm trying to decide right now if I want to do, um, like, a bigger review of a single thing. If I want to talk about another genre. Or if I want to do one of the quirky or unique videos that I have just lying around. Uh, right now, I'm in, like, the deciding what next vid I'm making phase. I have a few ideas, but I haven't settled on what what's going to be put out. I'm stuck down here again. Oh. There's a clear pipe. Huh. I didn't see that. What's the opposite of a movement shooter? Stationary consumers. A game where you sit and eat. That would be the opposite of a movement shooter. Tower defense. Wow, yeah, no, that's that's pretty accurate. Turn-based RPGs. I don't know if that's a... I mean... I don't know if that's an antonym, but that's definitely, like... Nothing... nothing like it. Which is funny, because I actually have a video idea about turn-based RPGs, so... You might have just given me food for thought. Is CS a movement shooter? I've had a comment like that. I don't consider it. I don't care about boosting. About standing on your teammate's shoulders. That's a form of movement, but the actual fighting isn't like that, you know? So I don't think so. Not unless you want to split hairs or you're one of those... Um, tactical shooter JOs that wants to sit there and defend it. Don't disqualify CS because it's got movement. You just don't understand it. Yeah, we have. We just clearly have different definitions of movement. That's all. It's not that it's not a movement shooter. It's that we got different definitions of that word. Pogfish, Pogfish. What's my take on turn-based RPGs? They can be done right. Chrono Trigger, Deltarune, Undertale. I haven't played Earthbound, so no opinion. It really comes down to having an interesting combat gimmick and having good character writing. Otherwise, you end up with Pokemon. Super Mario Saga, I fucks with. That one had, that, I mean, that one's character isn't that strong. It's Mario, but the combat was fun. I'm of the opinion that every turn-based game, if it wants to, like, an, keep my attention, uh, have, like, timing-based elements in the combat, where it's like, click now! Like, click A at the peak of your hammer swing. I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Uh, like, the Undertale, like, click in the middle of the screen, that kind of shit. I like that. Feels a bit more involved. The Chrono Trigger, where you stand, in, uh, like, aim is a part of it. I like that. Haven't played Paper Mario. Don't have an opinion. Haven't played Xenoblade. I have a backlog of RPGs I need to play. Which, if I ever make that video, I will definitely need to play through them. So, probably not the next video, but... 
Well, Shay, won't we? There's a button some- I already went down there. There's a button somewhere that turns on that trampoline, I think. I liked Hollow Knight, but again, didn't finish it, got lost, didn't know where to go, and now I'm just afraid to pick it up because I'm gonna be lost and not know where to go. But I liked it. it. I didn't drop the game because I was I hated it. I dropped the game because I didn't know where to go. And I couldn't find a tutorial that taught me where to go. So I just gave up. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. There will be back seating, but I mean, I, that's at this point I kind of need it for for Hollow Knight. Like you can't backseat a boss fight, right? I still gotta win those on my own. And no one wants to watch a streamer walk around lost for three hours. Unless you're a fan of Battle Royales. So I uh, I think that'd be all right for Hollow Knight. Just a bit of feedback. I gotta work quick. I got about 10 minutes. Oh, there it is. I was gonna say, um, I gotta be gone at 8.45, so I need to find a save point, which I just did. Which is good, because it means I... Um, can explore a bit forward and then just... Oh god, no, it's not a bus. It, oh, it's a mini bus. I can explore a bit forward and then save when I need to leave. Do I remember when a kid contacted me to do a school report? Yeah. On Google Plus. Uh, I don't remember the details. They were trying to talk about, like, content creation or game design or something, and they wanted to use me as a citation, I think. And I, I gave them the okay, I think. Are you that kid? What was your grade? I mean... I'm probably more likely to be accepted than Wikipedia by a teacher. How do I feel about that? I'm, I don't mind. It's humbling. I get nervous when my critiques and suggestions get taken seriously. Cause I, I appreciate it. Um, like when I made the last video, I made it more so for consumers to be like, all right, um, I think people should know about these games. I'm gonna talk about them and be honest. But I also understood a lot of those developers are mutuals with me. I know Hakita follows me. Low Hanging Nuts follows me. The Enchained Dev follows me. And, you know, I know a couple people at New Blood know my name. So I had an idea it was gonna be seen by the devs, which makes me nervous because I don't want to say something stupid. I don't want to give them bad advice that ends up backfiring. But... I... I also do enough proofreads of my scripts that I'm confident when I record it and put it out. Like, in the first draft of the last video, I was way harder on Get to the Orange Door. I was saying... This game is empty, it's been out for- I, I didn't say this, but like, the game's empty, it's been out for a while, but Andrew keeps changing the movement without adding much to the levels, and it's noticeable, and I pointed out the stuff that he, like, he took the teleporter event from Risk of Rain 2, but he didn't really add anything to it, I was just way harsher. But I, I rewrote the script to be more earnest, to be more honest, and be a bit nicer. And I was happy I did. So it's stuff like that. It's cool to know people take my word with some level of, like, credence, of meaning. 
But it also makes me have to stay on my toes. I don't want to say something stupid. I don't want to be an asshole. And I also try to understand that for every game I play, there's a human behind it that made it. Especially with indies, where it's usually like one person who made it. it wasn't a group like... Nikita is really the sole creator of Ultra Kill. Andrew is really the... I don't know, the power top of Get to the Orange Door. So... I can't talk to them like I'm talking to a developer team that can take getting shit on by a developer. Like, there's a real person. And I, I gotta be mindful of that. I don't know what this tramp- this trampoline, um, treadmill did. How many drafts do I go through? Um, so it's hard to say. Last year, I would go through like four, four to five, three to five. But the TF2 video, it was one script. Because I didn't want to overthink it. I wanted to give my honest, upfront opinion. The last video, it was really just one script that got proofread, like twice. And the script didn't even change that much. So really just one and a half, maybe two. Because like, I, some sections didn't change while some did. That kind of thing. So right now, it's one script that gets proofread. Um, to change a couple sections. All in all, takes me through, uh, like... It's, I have a very, very, uh, I have a versatile, a fluid creation process. I will write out a full script, start editing, and then I, st I edit from the, f the front backwards, or from the front to the end. So when I made the last video, I edited the Ultra Kill part, then I edited the get the Orange Door part, just front to end. And sometimes, you know, I'd finish three parts, get to Enchained, and I'd decide, I want to rewrite this. So I'd rewrite the middle part while keeping the first parts, that kind of thing. There's no right, correct way to write or create. You just gotta find out what works for you. And I, I kind of know what works for me right now. So this water is drained. I need to get my mech back. It might have already been drained. I'm not sure, but I don't have time to figure that out tonight. I gotta be somewhere in 15 minutes and I gotta get food in my stomach in five. So I'm actually going to... Wolf. I'm actually gonna call it here don't have time to finish but I'm liking this game I think I'll, I'll play more of it on stream probably tomorrow but I cannot tonight it was just gonna be a small one so yeah I will be back probably tomorrow seven o'clock maybe earlier we'll see just keep an eye on the Twitter or the discord or anywhere or no nowhere and you'll just you know, fate will meet us again someday. But that's it for tonight. Thank you for coming by. Thanks, person shrugging for subbing. Anyone else who subbed as well, um, does does a lot for me. Uh, yeah, that is it. I am. I'm gone. Bye.